Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of My Kitchen Stories. Today, I am tackling the classic Italian dessert casserole, otherwise known as tiramisu, which literally translates into pick-me-up. The creamy part is super creamy. The lady fingers are really tender and the espresso is very, very deep. That is tiramisu. If you're new to the channel, I'm Joanne Molinaro. I'm a James Beard award-winning cookbook author and recipe developer, and all of my food is plant-based, including today's tiramisu. Making a vegan tiramisu, it's not easy. That's my recipe that I have been reworking for many, many, many months. That's my Lulu. And we're gonna start by preparing all of the ingredients that we need for this decadent, vegan and high protein tiramisu. I've consulted a lot of recipes, many of them not vegan recipes, including my late father-in-law's recipe for tiramisu and developing this plant-based version. And it starts with some butter. This is ultimately going to go into the whip mascarpone cream, that really dreamy, creamy, custardy filling in the tiramisu. I like to make that first before I make anything else so that it can sit and set in the refrigerator while we make our lady fingers and the rest of the tiramisu. So into a blender that goes along with some soft tofu. Tofu makes so much sense as a plant-based alternative to mascarpone and that's because it's fermented just like cheese is. I am using soft as opposed to silken tofu because I think that the amount of liquid in silken tofu renders the custard a little bit too liquidy. That said, if all you can find is silken tofu, that'll be fine. It'll just be a little bit more liquidy than this version. I'm also adding vegan cream cheese in order to help with that stability and of course a little bit of sugar and vanilla extract for flavor. I was watching this Italian chef uh, an old school Italian chef make old school tiramisu and he actually lifted a bowl of the mascarpone whipped cream and put it over his head to show just how thick and stiff it's supposed to be. And that's how I knew that maybe silken tofu wasn't gonna do the trick. But this soft tofu, you're gonna see later, it's perfect. It also tastes absolutely freaking mm. phenomenal. It tastes so good. So like I said, we're gonna stick this in the fridge while we work on the remaining components of the tiramisu, and that is going to allow it to set. Next, we're going to tackle the lady fingers. This, I feel, is the most challenging part of a vegan tiramisu. How do you get those light biscuits? Well, it's gonna start with some aquafaba or bean juice. Later, I'm gonna show you how to transform this bean juice into the perfect meringue for your beautiful, fluffy lady fingers. But first, we have to prep our trays. You're gonna line two trays with some parchment paper, and then you're gonna bust out a ruler and a pencil, and you're going to stencil out four inch long lines. You don't have to do this, but I do recommend that if you want uniformly beautiful lady fingers. I'm gonna prep some of my other ingredients. This is sun tofu, which is softer than silken tofu, my go-to egg yolk replacement. This is some cream of tartar for our meringue and a little bit of ground turmeric for color. I don't want my lady fingers to be too pale. We're also gonna add a little bit of vegan butter and finally our dry ingredients for the lady fingers. A lot of flour, which you do want to sift because you want it to be really light and fluffy, just like your lady fingers. We're gonna add some cornstarch for a little bit of softness, some baking powder in order to have a little bit of lift in our lady fingers, and a little bit of salt for flavor. And then you're just gonna whisk that all together to make sure there aren't any clumps. All right, now let's whip some bean juice. Okay, so I keep my stand mixer on the ground and that's because if you've used one, you know it has a tendency to move around and I don't want it to fall off my counter. We're gonna add that bean juice or aquafaba right into our mixing bowl using the balloon attachment along with that cream of tartar. And then you are just going to mix it on high for about eight to 16 minutes until it looks like this. I mean, isn't that amazing? Like science, guys, that is incredible. Talk about not going anywhere. Those are stiff peaks, just like you would find in egg whites. Now, we wanna add some flavor, which comes in the form of some sugar. And you're gonna whip that until it gets really nice and glossy, but also remains stiff. It's gonna take about two minutes on high. And again, just look at that. Look at how it's not going anywhere. It's amazing. Now we're gonna add some butter to a separate bowl along with a little bit of sugar, as well as that egg yolk replacement, the silken tofu, 
and some turmeric. And this is gonna create a little bit of a custard. We're gonna add some vanilla to that too to make sure it tastes really yummy. We're gonna mix that with a hand mixer until it's completely smooth. And look, you've got like an egg yolk custard situation. And then we're going to incorporate the stiffly whipped aquafaba, that meringue. And you're gonna do it by using that motion with a spatula. You're gonna go around and down the middle, around and down the middle. Once the meringue has been fully incorporated, you're going to sift in the dry ingredients. Look, if you don't wanna sift them in, you don't have to. I'm just taking every precaution to make sure that the lady fingers come out really nice and light. You're gonna use the same motion that you did with the meringue, the around and down the middle, until you finally get sort of like shoe pastry dough. That's the consistency you're looking for. I'm gonna fit my piping bag with a one half inch tip, and I'm going to fill it about halfway. One thing that I learned is you do not want to overfill your piping bag. It should only be 50% full at most, otherwise you are in for a world of pain with your forearms. You're gonna want to stabilize your parchment paper because it's gonna wanna move around a lot when you start piping out the lady fingers by just taking a dab of the dough and putting it underneath like a little bit of glue. I got that tip from Preppy Kitchen, who I adore. So piping the lady fingers, it's not going to be easy if it's your first time. And so don't worry about it if it doesn't look great. You can snip the dough with some scissors if you have trouble getting it to separate. That's what I did. It took a lot of practice. It doesn't matter if they don't look pretty. Remember, they're being sandwiched in cream and espresso and all sorts of stuff. No one's actually going to see the lady fingers. You're going to want to dust them generously with powdered sugar. I often forgot this step or didn't think it was important, but it doesn't just add flavor to your lady fingers or give them that lovely puckered texture. It also prevents them from spreading in the oven and getting a little bit too flat and wide. So definitely do that. You're going to place them in the oven at 350 degrees for about 15 minutes. And you're going to know that they're ready when the bottoms just start to get a little bit toasted, like you can see here. These turned out perfect. And you can see the holes when you break into them. Now it's time to make the espresso syrup which starts with espresso. I'm actually using decaf, so anyone who's watching their caffeine can still enjoy this dessert even in the evening, which is usually when, you know, people eat dessert after dinner, right? We invested in this barista or espresso machine a few years ago, and my brother, who is a coffee snob, bought me all these cute little unnameable tools to make the best espresso. If you do not have an espresso machine, just make yourself a really strong cup of black coffee and that'll do the trick. Next, I'm going to add a generous splash of brandy. It is going to adultify this dessert. If you don't want to do that, you can just add water. And of course, I'm going to add a little bit of powdered sugar to make sure it is, you know, a syrup. The first layer of this dessert casserole is soaked lady fingers. So you're going to soak your lady fingers in that espresso syrup. And the longer you allow it to soak, the more espresso syrup it will absorb and the more espresso-y your tiramisu will be. My husband likes his very espresso-y. I kind of prefer it a little bit less so, but use your judgment there. I'm actually going to fill up the entire bottom layer with the cookies and if they don't fit, I will cut them, but actually I think they fit kind of perfectly in one full layer. Next, I'm gonna take that beautiful cream, that mascarpone cream out of the fridge and you can see how lovely and stiff it's become. I'm gonna put half of it over that first layer and then I'm gonna create a second layer of soaked lady fingers and then use the rest of that cream on top. I'm telling you, this is such a delicious dessert. Look at how beautiful that cream goes over that second layer of soaked lady fingers. I'm going to use an offset spatula to smoothen out the top. You can just use the back of a spoon and then I'm going to dust it with some cocoa powder. Normally I would wait to do this until right before serving, but I'm actually bringing this over to a friend's house for dinner. So I got to do it now. Ideally, you should wait at least 24 hours before digging into this. I know it looks so amazing right now, but trust me, it will taste better if you wait a full day. All right, I have been working on this for a long time, so let's give it a try. That is amazing. That is tiramisu. Thanks everyone for joining me for another episode of My Kitchen Stories. If you enjoyed this episode, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and let me know what you want me to make next. Oh, so good.